Hi there, it's Asar from Dream Movies Music. Uh, today I'm going to show you a short tutorial um, on Moon of Deer, a track that was written by myself and Heather Burgess, my co producer at Dream Movies Music. Um, and for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be doing this in Cubase, Cubase 9.5. Um, and of course, uh, you can see what I've got up there currently is the waveform straight from the mixer channels in Reason. So that's straight from my two bus in Reason. Um, you can see the level is not almost squashed towards zero as yet. Uh, I wanted to keep this um, at least sort of 46B headroom. So of course we've got some space to play with in the mastering stage. So this is going to be covering the mastering very, very briefly. It won't be a detailed video, but I'm just going to show you basically what I've done um, in terms of the mastering. So I'm going to play you a small section here. Um, and of course this um, is unmastered currently, so I've got no mastering effects on there. So here we go. Okay, so you can see um, that's the level where it's currently sitting. And now I'm just going to show you um, while it's playing, um, I'm just going to turn the mastering channel off, uh, off and on. Sorry. Um, so just bear with me one second, and I'm going to show you this. So here we go. So as you can hear, quite a big difference um, in levels and uh, of course EQ, a little bit of saturation on there as well. So I'm just going to show you briefly what I've got on here in my mastering chain. Um, the first plugin I've got here, I'll just drag it onto the screen, is a ozone limiter. Um, and as you can see, I'm only just touching the threshold, um, keeping it very modest. I only just want a little bit more level there. Um, so you'll see what happens here when I hit the play button. So you can see there, um, I was turning that off and on for you. So that's the first plugin I've got in the mastering cycle here. Um, that's Ozone Isotopes. That's a vintage limiter. So the next thing I've got in the mastering chain is I've got some mid-size processing on an EQ here. Uh, excuse me, some mid-size processing on an EQ. Slight bass cut there, just below 40, uh, but of course I've got a slightly deeper cut on the side processing. Um, this is FabFilter Pro Q, wonderful EQ. Um, you can process the sides separately, um, so that's great. And this is what I've done in this case because this track's got a very deep bass. So I've just taken a little bit of the stereo image out on the FabFilter with a low cut only on the sides. And I'll just demo this quick so you know what it sounds like.
so you can see that's the next plugin I've got in on the chain. Um, so that was the limiter first, fab filter second. I've got a spatial imager on this as well, which is the Dr. MS by Matthew Lane. Um, wonderful little plugin as well. Um, and this is really just for widening and um, giving that mix a little three dimensional feel. Uh, there's lots you can do on it, it is quite a complex plugin. For the purpose of this, I've just got a little bit of widening happening here on the width. So I'll just demo this for you quickly. So that's the Dr. MS uh, spatial processor. Um, next on the chain, I've got a, a bit of tape saturation. Um, now that's a Waves plugin. Um, also, a really nice little plugin adds a bit of that um, warmth that one gets from tape. Uh, of course, it's not a real tape machine, but um, it gives a sort of close proximity to the warmth it adds to a mix. So I'll just demo this here. So as you can see that adds a little bit of warmth, a little bit of saturation. The next thing we've got in the chain here um, is a multiband compressor, also by FabFilter. Um, I really do like their plugins, they've got great sound, great algorithms. And they're very flexible, uh, very easy to use interface as well. So this is the on-off button. Um, I'll switch it on and off during playback. So here we go. So basically what we're doing there is um, I've got a slight boost on the bass there and you'll see the controls come up here. I've also got some attenuation happening there. Um, each time the bass gets to a certain level, uh, it's bringing that level down with some multiband compression. And the same on these bands, a slight boost there. Um, on this one, slight cut when those frequencies around about 800 get out of hand, to, uh, 800 to 1k. And the same here, um, slight boost. And of course, we've got a little bit of uh, attenuation here, just in case there are any high frequencies that want to pop out past that threshold band range. And of course, last but not least, 
we've got the ozone mastering plugin which i like very much um, now this has got a number of modules on it the first plugin in the chain here or the first module rather i've got some gentle eq happening there um, i've got an exciter uh, with these bands sorry for these various bands for saturation um, only slight boosts on each band um, these are the crossover points i will demo that for you quickly so have a listen So that's the exciter. You can see it makes quite a bit of a difference with that activated on and off. Um, the next one I've got some dynamic EQ. Um, and here again, <coughs> excuse me, here again I'll just demo that for you. So that's dynamic EQ. The next module I've got on there is an imager for stereo width. Uh, this one can make quite a big difference. You can also overdo it, uh, so be quite careful. But I'll give you a demonstration here. So you can see quite a big difference with that imager. Adds a bit of stereo width. Um, the Dr. MS is also adding some stereo width as well. Last on the chain, uh, one would always have a maximizer. That's your final level. Um, and this I've got down to about threshold of 3, 3 dB. So not too much happening here, but you'll see the waveform when it's playing. Um, it is adding some level. I'll play around with the levels, switch it on and off, and I'll bypass the whole of Ozone to show you the difference while it's playing. So here we go.
uh, as you can see, quite a big difference with that maximizer. Um, now on the right here, I've got my main level meter. I've got that set to the K12, which was designed by Bob Katz. Uh, that's a K12 scale, which is a sort of recommended type of standard for levels. So you can see you can see how those levels change here once it's playing. So I'll just show you that quick. So I like to keep that at, you know, sort of within the yellow. You can dip into the yellow, it depends how loud you want it. But for this track, um, I don't want it super loud. Uh, I just want it sort of moderate. So that's the K12 scale. I think I showed you in the last video. You've got different options here. K12, 14, uh, 14 is for streaming. Uh, K20 is for broadcast. And you've got some other scales there as well. So that's it as far as the um, applications that I've used to master this track. Last but not least, you've got a little dither button here. When you hit dither, um, that's just for the final audio rendering, because um, currently the WAV file is 24-bit, and I'm going to render that down to 16-bit once it's uploaded as a master for commercial purposes. So that's the dither that's on. And now I'll just play the full track. Um, so you've got an idea of the whole track and how it sounds mastered. So here we go. I'll leave this meter on for you. So you can see what's happening there while it's playing. Uh, we'll just take this back to the start. Here we go. This is the master track playing.
So there we go. So that's the master track. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause the video. You won't notice that. I'm going to render the audio file down, show you the difference between the audio file that's unmastered and the audio file that's mastered. So I'll be back with you in a sec. So there we go. That's the WAV exported. And of course, I'm just going to stop this quick and I'll upload the WAVs for you. So you can see the difference. You can see the difference in level there. This is the mastered stem. Uh, you see, I haven't crushed it into oblivion. Uh, I still wanted to keep some dynamics there because of the nature of this particular track. Of course, if it was dance or something else, it'd be quite a bit more squashed there. Um, and that's the mix track. So you can see quite a big difference in level. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down. And once again, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Take care, and thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.